I had an incredible couple of days exploring the Grand Teton area, but it was time to head north up into Yellowstone National Park. And if you've been fly fishing a while, you know that this is a destination for people in the United States and internationally to sample the fly fishing. The incredible scenery, the mountains, the lakes, the streams, the wildlife make this place iconic. It is a true American destination and one that I was so blessed to be able to sample in the summer of 2020. All right, so just said goodbye to the crew that I hiked through the Grand Tetons with. Uh, it was so much fun having them around and I was definitely getting a little lonely. It was nice to be able to visit with some people. What I'm gonna pretty much do is I'm just gonna drive through the park all day long. I'm just gonna try and hit some rivers that I grew up reading about, uh, some fabled rivers here in Yellowstone. I'm just gonna have a good time. I'm gonna try and record as much as I can here. All right, so just got into, just got into Yellowstone, got my map here. First things first, need to get a fishing license and uh, probably gonna do a little bit of sightseeing as well. So whenever I got to the park, I didn't head straight for the stream. I headed to the geysers and some of the mud pots to see some of the sights before hitting the water. Well, it didn't take long until I kind of had my fill of the crowds. I needed to step away. So I went to the river to find some solitude and to find some Yellowstone cutthroat trout. I think I'm gonna have to go to a dry dropper. A big dry too, he wanted that thing. Looks like uh, my first fish in Yellowstone National Park, and how fitting, it is a Yellowstone Cuddy. And man, is this fish beautiful. There he is, Yellowstone National Park. First Cuddy. Let's see if we can get him. There he goes. That was awesome. All right, so working our way forward now, I switched to a elk hair caddis, something very buoyant that'll float well. And then underneath, uh, it's called the open wound. Basically a Higgins SOS, um, if you're familiar with that fly, but a lot easier to tie, highly recommend that fly. And that little rig is gonna be hopefully what can get some, uh, some fish in the net for us. There's a fish on the dropper. There he is. He took it on the swing. He took the dry fly on the swing. I don't know what was going on. There was drag all through that. Nice cut. These fish are beautiful. They remind me of brook trout from back home. Beautiful cutty. Another one. Awesome. There he goes. On the uh, Ferreira's open wound. This guy. Another cutty in the net. Nice. goes so as as far as flies are going right now the bigger caddises are producing for me on top 
and then just uh, small black flies on the bottom. After bringing a couple of cutties to the net, I decided it was time to take a little bit of a lunch break, enjoy the scenery a little bit, and head on down the road to the next stream. So, you know, as we do these videos, especially on this trip, I like to get my honest opinion on different fisheries. And so far, I'm definitely impressed with what I've, I've sampled in Yellowstone and from what I've heard about uh, fly fishing in Yellowstone. But man, it, it is, it's a shame, uh, you know, just over the time, I, I, I was in Yellowstone about a decade ago with my family, and this place has changed. Uh, the traffic, it's unreal. And uh, you know, I'm glad that there are people out enjoying national parks because I think that's important. Getting people interested and invested in federal land is how we protect it. But it is a shame uh, to sit in traffic whenever you are in such a beautiful place. So we are on the way to the next destination in the park. Hopefully we get there soon, traffic dependent. Okay, so we are at river number two in Yellowstone National Park. I ended up kind of taking a tour of the park, uh, looking for water that I liked. Um, I finally found water that I liked. I'm actually seeing some fish work. Uh, they're sporadically rising here and there. So I'm gonna start with a dry dropper. It's a little bit bigger water, hopefully find some nicer fish. All right, so we are in the back of the RAV. Um, fishing did not pan out like I hoped it would today. I feel like I sat in traffic more than anything trying to get around the park. I think the plan tomorrow is rather than fish in the park, I'm going to fish just outside the park. Uh, so we're going to get up bright and early and going to hit the stream. Okay, so we are at the area that I wanted to fish in. Um, it was so cold this morning. It was 33 degrees whenever I woke up. I'm glad I was sleeping in my car. Uh, so I was up in West Yellowstone, headed down the valley a little bit, and I think I'm going to grab some breakfast. I'm at a, a place that I had breakfast last year, and their breakfast is so freaking good. So going to grab some breakfast just because it's going to be so cold. Um, let, the, let the air temp come up a little bit, and then I'm going to hit the water, and I am going to hit it hard. That place is just so good. Uh, <laughs> the pancakes are gigantic. Uh, I have a big appetite. And on top of having a big appetite, I just got done with a three day, 40 mile backpacking trip in the Tetons. Lots of elevation gain. So I was starving um, and I struggled with that. <laughs> so I have some leftover pancake. They were so friendly in there. Their whiting selection was unreal. Uh, glad I stopped, so I'm gonna run down uh, downstream and then it is gonna be time to hit the water.
It was a great afternoon out on the river. Uh, I ended up catching a ton of fish and the scenery was out of this world. Alright, so quick morning recap. Um, I ended up catching I think probably around 10 trout and then a pile of white fish. I didn't talk to the camera that much because I was sharing water with uh, some fellows from Arizona. I uh, didn't really want to be speaking to the camera whenever I was, uh, I was with those guys. Tying up some flies right now. Just had some lunch. And as soon as I get these flies cranked out, I am going to step out on the water once again. Hopefully get into some more fish. All right, let's go catch some fish. All right, first trout here at the new spot. Nice, healthy fish. Let's let him calm down a little bit. Yeah, it's almost like he's got a broken jaw or something. Not bad. Let's get him back in. Nice. So, that fish came on just a little Thread Frenchie, one of my confidence patterns. Thread Frenchie about a foot below just a Golden Stone uh, dry dropper setup. Uh, George Daniel actually talks about this setup for pocket water in his book, uh, his newest nymphing book, and it's working pretty well for me. Fish number two in the net. The quality of these fish is just unreal. And there he goes. Quick release. Again, I'm just focusing on these pockets here. Really nice pocket water, throwing that dry dropper rig in there. Nothing on the dry so far. I'm gonna keep it on a little bit longer, but I may go over to a New Zealand wool indicator with my nymph underneath because there's less maintenance involved in keeping that indicator afloat versus one of these flies keeping that afloat. All right, so another fish in the net. It is a quality, qual quality fish. As he swims off. These rainbows are feisty, man. All right, so it was a really enjoyable session again. Picked up a lot of fish. Now I'm gonna head back, probably grab something to eat, maybe do a little bit more fishing. I'm gonna head down towards town and uh, camp out in that area for the evening. But again, we always like to just point out how awesome it is just to be out on the water. Just, you know, seeing all these caddis buzzing around in the trees, uh, seeing some of these wildflowers that are blooming, the Indian paintbrush, uh, you know, just walking around, seeing the mountains. It's just awesome to be out here. And I, I don't take it for granted. It's a huge blessing. And I'm really glad that I get to do this before I start work. After leaving the stream, I made my way towards town where I set up camp for the night. The next morning I did a little bit of fishing before finally leaving for my next destination, officially wrapping up my time in Yellowstone National Park and the surrounding area. There is so much beauty inside and outside of the park in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. And it is awesome that in the United States, we have these federally protected pieces of land, these national treasures 
that we preserve for future generations. While I was sad to leave the Yellowstone area, I knew that there was a lot more ahead of me on this trip. A lot more fantastic adventure. Pretty good ground um, and pretty shallow water too. And uh, what was coming out of his mouth was a uh, little sculpin that was all chewed up. Got a nice cut myself here. All right. 